So uh, I've chaired the panel which has uh, drafted this report and it covers uh, quite a large area uh, relating to the use of neuroscience and its application to uh, military training, uh, to uh, development of weapons which may be based upon neuroscience technologies, as well as to the legal and ethical framework uh, which governs their use. We've looked at, first of all, um, the sorts of uh, applications in neuroscience that can be used to improve the performance of the military. And uh, several of these are very, very exciting and potentially uh, very useful for us. For example, um, we think that the use of new brain imaging technologies will be very useful for screening of military personnel, for uh, recruiting them to specific tasks, uh, and for possibly training uh, uh, personnel and uh, pilots and so on in, uh, to do specific tasks more efficiently. So in that respect, um, this is a very, very positive type of um, application uh, which may improve the efficiency of our troops and also uh, in, the, in the long term save money, of course. Another set of applications uh, consists of the application of neuroscience to the rehabilitation of wounded soldiers and sailors and airmen. Uh, here we've seen uh, huge advances in neural processing, understanding neural processing, and the application of this really uh, to the development of fully prosthetic limbs. Uh, this is a very exciting area which um, promises uh, a lot for the rehabilitation of patients with, for example, amputated limbs or spinal injuries in the future. We've also looked at uh, drugs which can be used, uh, for example, to erase painful memories. Uh, this could be particularly relevant to the treatment of soldiers who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. In addition, we've also looked at the use of drugs uh, for enhancing the performance of soldiers and sailors and airmen. So, for example, um, drugs which may uh, combat fatigue and obviate the need to sleep quite so frequently would obviously be quite useful to the military uh, if they were available and could be given safely to personnel. On the flip side of all these uh, advances which are generally beneficial in tone, there's also uh, the prospect that these same technologies could be used uh, to degrade the performance of the military, uh, of the adversary. So for example, um, there's been a lot of interest uh, by various governments around the world in the development of chemical weapons, uh, which, uh, for example, anaesthetic agents agents which uh, modify the functioning of the central nervous system in such a way as to degrade performance. Uh, these are obviously uh, very dangerous directions to take this research in, uh, but we try to survey them uh, in as much detail uh, as we can. So overall, we've come up with a number of recommendations, and uh, these include recommendations uh, to the international community. Um, these particularly take the form of increasing the level of awareness by scientists of the potential uses that their work is going to be put to in the future. This is very, very important and is one of our central messages. There are messages also to the um, people who frame legislation. We believe that uh, agents acting uh, on the central nervous system, uh, neuroscience applications, uh, should be made a focus for, for example, the Biological Weapons Convention and also the Chemical Weapons Convention. And the government should clarify their thinking uh, with regard to the use of agents um, which are currently approved for domestic riot control, uh, 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 particularly those which could be uh, classed as incapacitating agents. This is a big issue uh, which we need to get uh, ironed out. So I, I guess finally, um, the report um, stresses that there should be more openness on behalf of governments in, in saying the types of research they're doing in this area. We believe that actually um, this will be enormously beneficial. It's uh, much better to be open about these things and to collaborate openly uh, with academia and, and other partners. Uh, this will be of enormous benefit to scientists who are working on military applications, uh, but also uh, hugely beneficial to uh, the academic sector as well. And we mustn't forget that a lot of very important and interesting technologies uh, which we currently use have come originally from military applications. A very trivial example, of course, is GPS, uh, which started off as a way of positioning uh, nuclear submarines.
but we now have it in our sat-navs, in our phones, and even in our cameras.